really good saints. We do. If you look just out there, there are a ton of saints sitting right out there. Yes. And, and not just there, not just here, but out in our community, out into the world, everywhere, serving God. You can see them in school. You can see them in shops. You can see them at the grocery store. You can see them everywhere. Yeah. So here. There are. I like your school then. If you had lots of saints in your school, that's a good school. Well, maybe you'll have to find out. How's that? So here's my challenge. Here's my challenge to you. So I want you to ask one of these people, whether it's your parents or your grandparents or somebody sitting out here or maybe somebody at your school, to tell you of a story about a saint that they have known. And I promise you, it will be good. It will be good for you, and it will be good for the person telling you that story. So and I challenge you out there, sitting out there, for you to share a saint story with one of us. And maybe we'll just all be blessed by a saint story. So let's pray together. Dear Lord, Dear Lord. today we sing a song of your saints. We are thankful for the saints we have known. We are thankful for the saints we have known. Please help me to be a saint too. Please help me to be a saint too. Amen.
Our scripture lesson today is from the book of Ephesians, book one, chapter one, um, verses 11 to 23. In Christ, we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we who were the first to set our hope on Christ might live for the praise of his glory. In, you, in him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance towards redemption as God's own people, to the praise of his glory. I, Paul, have heard your, of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put his power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above the rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, <coughs> which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please stand and join together your voices in hymn number 177, He is Lord. We will sing it twice.
just light candles, it's okay. <laughs> we don't have to say anything. So we got this, the, the All Faith Day this morning, and, and I put a couple of pictures in, into the, the thing that was on my mind as I read this, uh, this passage from Ephesians, because it had to do with inheritance. It's the things that we, we inherit. And so um, I know that uh, when we, there are many of us that, that are really worried about that our stuff and, and what we're going to give to whoever we're going to give it to. And so the idea of making sure that you've got a last will and testament, you know, you, you want to make sure that there's somebody that you intend to get it, and they get it, and they get all of it, right? I mean, we wouldn't want to give it to them, would we? <laughs> you know who they are, right? You don't want them, you don't want them to have it. You want, you want people that mean something special to you to have it. And so I think that we can see the relationship with this. And we take great pains to do that. That, that we give up a lot of our own time and energy to go meet with somebody who knows more than we do about how to make this stuff work and pay them lots of money so that we can make sure that our stuff goes to who we want it to. And, and, and uh, all of our, our resources and finances, and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong. That's the way it ought to be. That's the way it ought to be. But then Paul writes this letter to the Ephesians, or someone writes a letter to the Ephesians and signs Paul's name to it. Either way, it doesn't matter. We've got this letter to the Ephesians that, that talks about an inheritance, a different kind of inheritance. And so on this All Saints Sunday, that we think about that which has been passed on to us. And we think about saints of the church, everybody has been into one of them magnificent cathedrals someplace and looked at these stained glass windows and, and uh, the way they, and these saints, they look like angels, don't they? I mean, they all have names. And in the Catholic faith, there's a whole bunch of them for a lot of different things. You know, the, uh, the, the, and, and St. Teresa was just, she was just, and I made a saint. And, and, then, and that's good because it, that we remember the things that they've done. And, and the only difference between the Catholic faith and ours, uh, you know, as far as the people that we venerate to that level is that they've seen a miracle. And I'm not so sure that we haven't seen the same faith with the people that we've known. But saints, they look so almost undirty when they look like this, so, right? I mean, we get to see them when they're when they've been, been like glorified through uh, uh, and, and through the, the glass and the light shines through them, and so we all capture that. But what do we know about the the, the, the big martyrs of the faith back in Jesus' time? The ones that we consider the big saints of the church, Saint Paul, Saint Peter, Saint John, those. They got dirty, didn't they? They got real dirty. In fact, you know, that most of them, like I said, were martyred. Most of them were persecuted. Most of them were kind of put to the test and the challenge in some way or another. And it wasn't, you know, they weren't always this pristine looking saint that we see right here. In fact, I'm sure there was sweat and blood and probably a whole lot of determination got thwarted and a whole lot of disappointment and heartache along the way. But perseverance, perseverance, because of the power that Paul talks about in Ephesians. This power that he ties to the resurrection because of the resurrection, that same power is, a, is in work in them today, and it's, that same power is at work in you today. The saints of the church. Jan said it best to the children. Who are the saints of the church? You ever seen somebody, a, a been in a church where the pastor baptizes a baby and then he walks down the aisle after he gets done and he says, you know, so they're St. Fred? <laughs> I couldn't resist that one. But it's true. And St. Lynn. And St. Stan. St. Candace. You see? How does that make you feel when somebody says that about you? Kind of elevates you just a little bit, doesn't it? You may even think, not me, I'm not worthy of that type. I don't know. But you should be. And you should look for the time that somebody does that for you, that remembers you. We're going to put some pictures on the screen that are remembrance time. 
And it's going to be painful because these are people that we cared for a lot. But the joy is that they had something that they wanted you to have. And that's why we gathered here this morning. Is to pay, and, and this time of celebration is to, to remember those people who cared about you so much. Paul says, Paul says, I have heard about you. And when I read that, I wondered to myself, and because Paul was also talking to the saints in the church, which means he has heard about you. He wasn't talking about them individually. He was talking about their body. I've heard about you. I have heard the works that you're doing. I've heard of your faithfulness. And Paul was not nowhere near them. Think about that back in Paul's time, the first century in the church. And he hears about them by word of mouth or by letter, I don't know, but, but he, he says, I've heard of you. What kind of work do you think that body of Christ was doing in a city someplace by a group of Gentiles that didn't have, didn't have a whole history of people that had gone before them to pass this faith on to them? These are, these are first century Christians. They didn't have grandma so-and-so to show and lead. They just heard it by mouth, by word of mouth, and they believed. Think of that. I've heard of the work that you do. I've heard about your faithfulness in Christ. I've heard about the ways that you have used this power of the resurrection to do things right.